think I know those guys. I think they're mine. What a good boy you are. You watching all your girls? Good boy. Just want to show the snow I have here. When people are like, oh, we didn't get much that storm. Yeah, those drifts, or those piles, I mean. They're not drifts, they're piles that I actually shoveled. They're just about as tall as me. I did that. I shoveled that. Yep, so now we're going to head to work. Um, this is the beginning of my daily journey. It's a crazy long one. An hour long, but I do like it. I like to drive. I made a couple of videos over the last week and then I, I didn't post them or anything because what do we got up here in the road? Turkeys. Okay, so these are the neighbors' um, Scottish Longhorn cows. And <laughs> the neighborhood turkeys who... Um, look at this guy. Or gal. What you doing? Look at these guys putting their fans up. Hi, babies. Wow, they're everywhere. There's turkeys in the in the neighbor's driveway. They're all like, we're out of here. You know, they're not the brightest birds. <laughs> they can't help it. So, normally I would also stop down here and get the mail, but I don't feel like it today. That would be right here is our row of mailboxes, but I'm not doing that today. That's my other neighbor's house. Um, he's one of the longest time residents on this road. I think he's been here at least 40, 50 years, if not more. Um, and then his son is the house where the turkeys and the cows were. And then their grandson or his grandson lives at the very end of the road. So they sort of all live here. Um, so this is a little tiny dirt road in Vermont. Um, people down here, I'm headed towards the quote unquote main road, which is really just another dirt road. Um, and then six miles till you get to a main road. But um, the people down here are all you know, hooked to the electric grid and stuff, but from me on up, most people, there's a couple more houses that are hooked to the electric grid, but most people, self-included, are off the grid. So, okay, we had to pause to actually drive, but anyway, so this is my, my ride in. I have an hour long drive. Um, sorry that you're getting some of the hood of the car, but I don't have any kind of a fancy camera mount or whatever to make it look nicer right now. Um, yeah, it's certainly, I'd like to drive. I actually love to drive. I always have. I know there's people out there that don't like it. A lot of people say to me all the time, like, oh, how can you stand an hour drive? Um, I love it. I, that's my me time. That is my time to, um, I mean, look at this, first of all, it's beautiful. But second of all, like, that's my time to just sit back, listen to my music. I'm really hoping the heat kicks in here because it's pretty cold. Oh, it should be warm by now. Um, you know, that's, that's just, I can listen to my, uh, VPR talk radio um, and the news I can just I can just unwind so until very recently I was with my husband and you know he has major um, issues mental health issues and so I'd be with him all night and I'd be with my um, clients all day I work as a case manager for most people most of my clients have um, some mental health issues too and so that's very tiring draining type of stuff and so yeah an hour drive on either side of that is not a problem um, that was my time to unwind and just sort of ground myself um, grounding is really really important
important. And if you don't know how to do it, it's really important that you learn, especially if you're the kind of person who tends to be an empathic person, not just an empath, but an empathic person. You feel for others um, or you get pulled in by others' energy. Um, it's really sort of an important thing that you, uh, you know how to ground. And the simplest way, you know, is basically you can close your eyes or keep them open as you get more, um, you know, experienced at it. And, um, oh, we're going to turn here, I think. This road was not too bad yesterday. During mud season, this can be a pretty rough road. I think you guys are going to see some pretty serious bumps, and I apologize, but it's also about five to seven miles quicker than going the other way, which is a better road. It's all paved, but it's um, a lot longer. And with the price of gas right now, I'm just trying to be as um, conservative as possible. So anyway, so grounding, um, the simplest and quickest way to learn, and, and what's fascinating to me about grounding is this is something that was taught by like ancient, you know, practitioners, maybe say shaman or medicine men or whatever, um, witches to uh, those who do witchcraft usually know how to do this. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the easiest way to learn um, oh, sorry. And then nowadays it's also taught in psychology. It's taught in, um, DBT, dialectic behavior therapy. So it cracks me up that, um, you know, this thing, you know, people in medicine often, Western medicine often like, ha ha and poo poo, this or that, like shamanism or witchcraft or whatever. And yet they're, they're pulling elements from it and it's considered extremely effective especially for people with certain mental health disorders like bipolar disorder borderline personality disorder etc grounding is a is a powerful tool and um, what I like to teach people is um, centering and grounding so I'm not going to talk so much about centering right now but grounding and so grounding is when you just feel you've sort of taken on too much energy um, and uh, you just need, you need to ground some of it out. You need to send some of it back into, say, the earth is a good, good one. Um, and so what the very best way to do it, of course, would be to stand outside barefoot on the ground. Um, but you don't always have that opportunity. So it's okay if you're not barefoot. It's okay if you can't go outside and you got to do it inside on the floor. Um, you can just picture it going under the floor and out. And the, and the, the point is you're picturing it, your visualization, your imagination, let's say. Um, and so you sort of, it's best to stand up if possible. Again, if you're a person who can't stand, that's okay too. Just try to get your hands on the floor, uh, or feet on the floor, I'm sorry. I've also grounded after very strong and powerful ceremonies before by putting my hands down on the ground too um, and just sending that energy out through my hands, not just my feet. So what you want to picture, as I was just saying, is the energy, the extra energy that you have, the excess energy that you need to get rid of or ground out um, into the ground. And so here's some big bumps. Woo! And then we are on pavement, baby. Yeah. All right. So the bumpy bumpies should be over. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I get to do that every day. Um, unless I go the other way, but still, yeah, and it's going to get worse through mud season. There's going to be days where I'm going five miles an hour, and it is, it is treacherous. So, um, but I wanted you guys to see my sort of, the beginning of my morning commute, which is only a few minutes of it. Um, I drive about 20 minutes, 25 minutes to the highway, and then I drive, um, it's probably about 30 minutes on the highway. And then I get off and I'm right pretty much at my office. Um, I work, uh, for those of you who don't know, in a homeless health care program. I'm a case manager. And all the people I work with um, tend, as I had said, to have mental health issues. And um, many have addiction issues. Not all of them, though. And there are people who have been homeless for many, many years. Mostly at least three years and up to 20 years or more. Um, and so um, they're a little wild, um, but they're great 
they're great people. They're they're fun to work with. Usually, I mean, there's not times they don't give me a headache. But um, I've been there going on three years, and I really, really, really love it. Before this, I worked with the homeless in a couple different places in a couple different capacities, and and this job I just love because it's the next step. These people are housed um, in their own apartments, and I'm just their case manager, helping them sort of, you know learn life like these are people who might be 40 50 years old and never had their own place before so i do everything from help them get food stamps to their social security because most of them are disabled and slip through the cracks of the systems the very bad systems we have in place for these type of things for decades um i might help them get a phone or a computer or internet or connected with psychic care um, or medical care or dental care um, etc etc and by being there in their lives long term as opposed to other programs I worked in where you're in somebody's life for three to six months you can't accomplish much in three to six months you can slap a band-aid on a situation but when you're talking about someone's whole life needs um, care you certainly need a program like the one I'm working in now this homeless health care program um, with this uh, it's called permanent supportive housing, which means they get their housing voucher and a place to rent, and they get a case manager, that's me, and they also have some staff, some housing staff, which is a couple of my colleagues. Um, so yeah, so anyway, so back to grounding. Um, so I, I did teach DBT for a little bit of time with a um, you know person, at, uh, another person who was a DBT teacher at Washington County Mental Health. Uh, local mental health agency um, and so I do know a little about it and I've taken shamanism classes and just self-studied a lot of things from a lot of religions and belief systems etc over 20 oh my gosh 20 plus years let's say 25 years and so like they all do this they all believe in this and the reason I always think that like practices like this carry through generation to generation or decade to decade or century to century is because it works and so back to that like um again like you you just put your feet on the ground and you picture the uh, i picture i like to picture like roots like i'm a tree and roots coming out of my feet and sort of tendrilling down into the ground um and i just ask the earth or in my case due to my spirituality gaia the earth mother to take that energy and sort of transmute it or do with it what she will, but take it away from me because it's too much. Um, I haven't done it very much lately, but it's a super important practice. Um, and it really does help. And then, and then there's other practices you can do, such as drawing down the moon or the sun, um, in which if you need more energy or a different kind of energy, more or less of something, um, you can do that too and like I said there's also centering and centering is um, picturing a spot I think in, in some Asian uh, cultures it's called your, your tan tian it's a, like maybe a couple inches above your belly button and your navel and that's sort of your center um, and that would be what your solar plexus chakra I think um, I always mess up the sh middle chakras there but I'm pretty sure that's what that is and you just sort of picture again that like all your energy is sort of centering into that spot and then maybe radiating back out of it, whatever, um, if you need. But, um, and again, that's just sort of to bring you back to center. And then like in DBT, what we would teach people when they're centering, you know, in, in DBT very often people, their energy is everywhere, their thoughts are everywhere, da da da. Sometimes they're in crisis because they're living in depression, which is living in the past, or they're living in anxiety, which is living in the future. Um, and uh, DBT teaches you, you're not in the past, you're not in the future, you're here right now and everything's okay. Um, and so look at this view, isn't this pretty? I hope you can see this on this camera because it's not the best camera, but this is like this little, I'm coming down Hill Street into Barry City and then you can see sort of going up the other side, Barry's very much in a valley and then these are the two mountains um, sort of flanking it. Um, so anyway, so you're not in the past, 
you're not in the future, you're here now and everything's okay now. And so you picture that, that center spot, that tantian, and you just focus on it. But another thing you can do, you can also look at like a candle flame, something like that, and you um, slow down, you slow down your brain. And the way you do that is you say, okay, what are like three things I can hear right now? And so like for me right now, I could hear, I could hear my own voice at first because I'm talking. I could hear maybe the wheels um, on the car and I could hear the heat blowing. Um, and so those are those three things. What are three things I can see right now? Well, I can see trees, I can see a stoplight and I see a silver car. Okay, so what are three things, you know, you could go on and on like that. See, hear, taste, smell, whatever. Um, depending on the situation. So, um, shoot, I thought I was going to get out here, but I'm not. Um, so, oops, sorry guys, I dropped you. Let me, uh, wow. <laughs> I guess I took that corner a little too much. Um, so, yeah, now we're in Berry City. Um, I'm hoping that you can see this. Anyway, so, that's centering, um, you know, and bringing yourself back to center and mindfulness. That's technically mindfulness. You are, you are reminding yourself that you are here in the here and now. You're not in that past. You're not in that future. You're not in those worries and anxieties about the future. You're not in the um, depression and sadness about the past. Um, you are here and now. So now we're in Berry City. Um, it's funny, it's kind of a pretty town, but it's also like a ratchet town. Um, Barry is sad in a lot of ways, and it has a lot of problems. It could certainly use some industry um, and some uh, an infusion of businesses or money. I always thought it would be really good in this town if they had a school, like a even if not a college, then like a bigger trade school or whatever than what they have, which is just the high school's trade school. But um, c college towns always do better, and they rarely fail. Um, I grew up in Albany, New York, or around Albany, New York, which is, you know, they have many, many colleges in Albany, from SUNY Albany to College of St. Rose. I don't even remember all of them anymore. And around Albany, they have our, everything from RPI. They have, you know, it's connected to Community College, Hudson Valley Community College, and the economy is always okay because those colleges sort of, um, you know, you've got thousands of students going there. They're they're shopping in local businesses, restaurants, etc. Look at this street. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's just empty business after empty business after empty business. These um, parking spots here to my right and left that are mostly empty, those used to be full all the time. This is sad to me, and this isn't just, I don't think this is just pandemic related. Um, Barry has always been a struggling little town. Um, and I just, uh, many years ago we had Bombardier, they made the trains um, nearby in Graniteville, and a lot of people were employed by Bombardier. And there was also a little printing press, which I can't remember the name of right now. Um, but they printed a lot of spiritual books. And those two places went out within uh, like a year or two of each other. And a lot of people lost their jobs. And I just feel that this town has never, never recovered. Um, just a sad, sad town. And yet you kind of hop over to Montpelier, which is the next town. And I'm headed that way because um, I'm going to grab some breakfast, and they're doing much better, but that's sort of the seat of the state government. It's the ca capital of uh, Vermont, so there's more just, you know, permanent business there. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, uh, ahead of us is the what they call the tower in um, Barrie, and that's one of the only, well, not one of the only, but one of the public housing um, places. It's a lot of senior citizens and um, some disabled people. Um, my aunt lived there when she got older. Um, but, and she loved it. She was very involved in like the activities and all that kind of stuff. But um, I always feel like when I'm in Barrie, I just can't get out of here fast enough. It's kind of like where I grew up around Albany, like Troy, New York was the same. And for a while, Schenectady was the same, but I think they've both 
improved quite a lot, but they were kind of like gross, dirty little towns with a lot of a lot of problems, a lot of poverty, a lot of addiction issues, a lot of um, well, you know, no no jobs, things like that. Um, so I really hope that at some point. Barry, because I do like Barry. Like you can tell, at one point, it was a pretty little town. Not a, in my lifetime that I remember, <laughs> but at one point it was a pretty little town, and people cared about it. And um, I would like to see like a mayor come in who is willing to improve it again. Um, it was one, another thing I noticed about Barry is there's almost no green spaces. There's a little park near my friend. Cynthia's house and otherwise there's like almost no green spaces and there was a really beautiful lovely community garden um, sort of on a back street there um, you wouldn't have known it was there if you didn't live here but if you did it was a nice place and I used to go sit and have my lunch there when I worked locally um, and they took it out for paid parking or whatever I don't know if they ever put the paid parking in but it was just heartbreaking. You go to Burlington and there's like 30 parks, you know? Um, of course, there's the lake and stuff, so a lot of them are lakefront. But that really makes a difference in a community. Um, and so that's, again, I feel like something that Barry should care about. They should, they should put in some green spaces. They should try to get some educational institutions in there, at least one. Um, and they should find some type of industry now that they don't have Bombardier and the printing press, find something, you know, entice a business to come in there, a bigger business that's manufacturing, so that you can, um, you know, and I'm talking a place with at least maybe 100 employees or something, because then they're contributing to your local economy, and the local economy is contributing to your constituents or, or residents or whatever. Um, you know, I know so much, but, you know, I don't live in Barrie. I live outside of Barrie. My mailing address, I guess, is Barrie, but it's really a few towns away from me. Um, so, that's that. There's Mattress Land. That's where I get my propane. Those people are awesome. Um, married couple. Very sweet um, people. And they work uh, with our local community action. That red building we just passed used to be community action. I worked there years ago and then they um, moved to a bigger building downtown in Barrie um, which was more convenient for people to get to and it was a bigger building they consolidated several buildings into one um, yeah so just <laughs> welcome to Vermont you see all the snow still all over the ground what's today March 15th or something it's the middle of March um, ah, this is so frustrating like I'm from upstate New York, and to me, it should be warming up in spring by now and not having to look at all this white stuff and, you know, think that there potentially could be more. I um, was looking at my Facebook memories yesterday and saw that a couple years ago on this day, we got 26 inches of snow, so I guess it wasn't so bad to get close to a foot where I lived the other day. It was amazing to me, too, to come down the hill and see that, like, just down the hill from me it seemed like they had like 10 inches less um just six miles down the hill so anyway that that's it guys i just wanted to um i'm gonna head on the highway soon and i'm gonna turn this off but i just wanted to talk to you about centering and grounding and show you part of my morning commute which i'm getting pretty close to the highway now so i'm gonna stop and grab um a cup of coffee and head to work Take care, stay woke folks.